Okay, this is going to be a quick video on how to use Microsoft Project. And you might see from the screen here, I haven't actually started with Microsoft Project. And that's done by design. Many people encounter issues with MS Project because they use it as a starting point for their projects. Before you even load up the program, before you even look at it, make sure you know what you're doing. In project management, this means having a work breakdown structure. So defining your activities is critical prior to starting the program. Okay, once we've done that, and I've just done a very simple WBS, having a planning stage, implementation, a handover for a very generic, maybe construction project. Here I've got a few tasks. One of the conventions I like to use in writing tasks is making sure you've got a verb in there. So you can see here something's physically occurring. The materials are being ordered, works are actually occurring in relation to construction, we're conducting a final inspection. So you can see using a verb there. And it becomes quite useful later on when we're actually running our project because we actually know what we're meant to do with that body of works. Milestones, I've just done an M here to indicate that I want to use that as a milestone. And my convention here is write a milestone as a past tense. So the drawing's approved. Reason for that is a milestone doesn't consume a duration. So when we actually enter our milestones into a project, we're going to have a duration of zero. So it's just a point in time. Right, we've got this. Next thing we're going to do is import that into MS Project. If you've done it using Word or Excel or something, you can easily just drag and drop, control and paste. <laughs> right, um, alternatively you can actually just type them in, press enter, move on to the next one. The first thing you'll notice is this task mode column here and you've got these drawing pins. First thing I like to do is when I'm starting a new project, go File, Options and just turn that off through the scheduling and we're going to go from manual to auto and I've actually done quite a comprehensive video and I'll provide the link for that onto manual versus auto scheduling for most of the time you want your default mode to be to be auto so now when I type in a task you can see it's going to be auto scheduled and you'll get this different blue icon okay. I'm just going to delete that for now right if you've already done it and you want to go retrospectively click on that auto scheduled and just drag that down now they're all auto scheduled. Next thing I want to do is have a start date and you can find this in project, project information. It takes today's date by default, the current date. You can change this so if your project started a while ago or if it's a project to start in the future. I'm just going to leave it to today's date. Everything else you can play around with that later on but I'm going to get out of that tab. Next thing you can do and these are high level features is change the working time. For smaller projects you probably don't need to do this but if you've got specific times that you want to run your project by you can go through and change these. Project uses this default, project starts at 8, they have a break from 12 to 1, starts again at 1 o'clock till 5pm. One thing that I do find useful is putting exceptions in. So these could be public holidays, so New Year's is coming up and that is a public holiday so I'm just going to put that in. January. Okay. And what I've got here is I'm just going to set this to non-working, it's done it by default and just click OK. And what you'll find there is work won't actually occur on New Year's Day. Okay. You can see that in the calendar it's got that as an exception day. Okay. One thing I like to do at the start of the year is just put all my public holidays in, then I'm done, save that as a template, easy done. All right. Now we can actually start doing the work. So I've got my, my tasks in at this point. I'm going to go through and indent them just as per this work breakdown structure. So these can be categories and the rest are going to be tasks under those categories. Best way to do this with project is using indent. So find all the tasks part of the planning stage, highlight them all, go to the task pane up here and click on this tab here which is the indent. Again, all of these I want part of the implementation tab and I click on that. And you can see what's going on here, it's saying that all these are grouped under implementation. We can do that and just show the project at a high level and you can see the summary bars here, just showing the, the length of the planning stage, length of implementation stage. It's considering handover to be a task because we don't have any, any subtasks underneath it. As soon as you add a subtask, um, I'll do this, complete lessons learnt, 
As soon as I make that a subtask, you can see that handover automatically becomes a summary. Okay. Great, I'm going to expand these because we'll be looking at them. And you can see for this task here, Microsoft Project's got a question mark. If I'd manually entered all of these and pressed enter, I would have got the same result. But because I copied and pasted, it's just assumed that I know what I'm doing. When MS Project gives you a question mark, that just means a task is it's estimating one day. It's just an arbitrary um, length of time it assigns to a task that you haven't told it otherwise. So what we're going to do is, as soon as you change that, it goes off and says, okay, now I know what I'm doing, I'm no longer an estimate. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is actually put some, some numerical values in here. And I'm just going to make up some numbers, develop working drawings, that's going to take us two days. Having engineering to approve, that's going to take us two days. So two days. And you can see just by putting a two or a three and so on, it's automatically assuming that you want to use days. It's not always the case. I'll just show you on the next task how you can change that. But for a milestone, we can go zero days. Alternatively, you can double click on the task and in the advanced we can go mark as a milestone. I find it's just easier to put zero on the duration. If you want to change the convention from days, we can write 10 minutes. Um, that's pretty quick ordering material. Uh, we can write hours. Days is obvious. We can write weeks. We can write months and so on. So there's a lot of different um, shorthand that you can write in there instead of doing X amount of days. And milestones again, I'm just going to put zero. So here's my project. Things I've done, entered in the work breakdown structure, put in the duration for each task. Project will automatically show me when it expects these tasks to be started or finished. At this point it's assuming everything can be done concurrently. We're going to tell it otherwise and at this point we're going to add scheduling logic. So there are a couple ways of adding scheduling logic. The quickest and easiest is by selecting the task and clicking on this link button. This assumes that these tasks have a series relationship so one task follows the other and so on. The benefits you get in scheduling is trying to run activities concurrently so running things in parallel actually saves us time and it doesn't usually come at a cost of quality. So what we want to try and do is identify things we can do simultaneously. And I'll make a video on how to link things in the different relationships, so that will help you out in that regard. But what we're looking at is what needs to be done before another task can start. By default, project will use a finish to start relationship. We can change that later on if we need to. So develop working drawings, we can assume we can do that straight away. So I'm going to have a predecessor of zero. Having engineering to approve, well, this needs to be finished first. So here I'm going to put a two and you can see project just does that link, that relationship. Other ways of doing this is you can manually um, drag it. Just wait until you've got that four crosshair here and drag it to the start of the next one. Okay. It does the same thing. For me, I don't know whether I don't have the dexterity or, or not, I just prefer to type a three in that column then I'm done. The other way of doing it is you can double click on a task which brings up the task information panel, click on predecessors and you can actually type in the task ID. I'm just going to type it in again. So I type in the ID 3 and it comes up with that. Here's where I can change the relationships if I want and add in lag and we'll talk about that in a second. Here I'm just going to link these in series because it makes sense. We order, then we have construction, so on, so on. What I recommend is instead of linking the summary bars, link the actual activities to the last one. Quite easily say implementation requires planning to be finished. Put a 1 here and you can see project schedules it by the summary bar here. The better way of doing it is actually linking it to the task. Okay. So very quickly I'm going to link this milestone. I'm just going to put a I'm just going to put a four in there and you can see the milestone gets linked. And I'm going to remove this and put the five here. And you can see now instead of linking the summary bars together, okay, I've linked it to the task. This actually helps a lot with your calculations. Handover, I'm going to do the same. The task that I need to finish before handover can start is practical completion. I grab that number 10, put that in, and we can see what's going on. Now, very briefly, MS Project gives you the ability to hide and, um, and show columns. So I'm just going to show you how to show your work breakdown structure. I've just gone insert column. I've typed in WBS. And you can see here it actually gives us our WBS codes. 
I tend not to put these in initially because it can create a bit of confusion when you're looking at these IDs for your predecessors. Okay, but you can see here that matches up with our WBS that we've used here. Okay. And that's a good way to check that you've actually completed everything on MS Project. Great. You can remove that and you can bring it back whenever you want. Okay, so nothing's gone when you hide a column. I'm not going to explain the different relationships, but I'm just going to show you how to change the relationships. Uh, I said by default MS Project uses finish, finish to start relationship. I'm just going to change the relationships of, uh, of this task here. Double click on the task and often it has the general tab open. I click to predecessors and I can just change start to start, finish to finish and so on. Put in lag if I want here. The other way of doing it is a shorthand way and I'm going to do construction work as this example here. I'm going to show you the shorthand way for changing the relationship and also add in some lag. So instead of just putting a 7 like I did before, I type in 7, S, to S, I'm going to use a start to start relationship and if you want to put in lag you just go plus 10 days. Okay. And you can see what it's done here, it's changed the relationship that can start when this starts but it's got to wait 10 days. You'll see what that's done here, it has just changed this relationship which we can change back and it's added the lag in there. So there's many ways that you can do this with project. I find that this is just the easiest way and you don't need to remember shorthand. Some people like to do it is if you can click on that small arrow there, double click, you can access that task dependency and this takes you to basically the same option. So here you've got three ways of doing it. Manually using the shorthand, double clicking on this arrow here or double clicking on a task, bring up the task information pane. Microsoft's great at showing you multiple ways of doing it. So what we've got here is we've got a, um, our project schedule. Next thing we're going to do is add some resources in. Again, a couple of ways you can do this. You can change the view here to the resource sheet. You can start putting in resource names. I'm just going to grab people from, from our office. And lucky for them, they're going to have to do some work. And then I changed I've got three options to work, which is usually a person, so if you can have a, a human resource, it usually comes under work. You've got a material, which is usually your cost per use, and then you've got a cost, which is you know a fee or something that doesn't change over time, or we can also put in some materials here. I'm going to put in some concrete, and I'm going to call it a material. I'm going to put a, a council approval, and that would come up as, as a cost. So you can see how that's being used there. You can, if you want, assign different calendars for different people. So if Nick just works, if Nick works 24 hours, uh, Mel just works night shift, you can change all these things around. And if you've got any specific questions, just shoot them over and I'll do a little video on how to fix those. But right, so that's entering resources very, very quickly. We're going to go back to our Gantt chart view. I'm just going to click on here. You can just click on the main button. Now we can start assigning tasks. A couple of ways to assign tasks. For me, I just like to click on this drop down and then assign the people who are actually working on the different stages. Alternatively, I could have gone to the resources tab uh, for a specific task and clicked assign resources and just added the resource in from here by putting the resources and clicking assign, assign and I'm just assigning everything to this site inspection. The next one is we can just go through and change our view to cost. All right, so I'm just going to click on this table and by default it's in entry mode. I'm just going to click to cost and we can see here the different costs of the activities and you can see the different costs the activities. I'll make another video here to explain how to do the cost functions because there's a lot more to it. It's kind of hidden away in this tables mode um, but you, know, you can find it. And we can pull up some very quick statistics by clicking on the project tab and clicking project information. From here we can see roughly the current duration, how much work is required. If I put some costs in we could see the costs there the expected finish dates and so on. Key thing here is really once you've done this, before you start doing any work at all, and I can't stress this enough, is click this little button here that says set baseline. 
So, once you've agreed that this is going to be the schedule, everyone's happy, click set baseline, and I'm going to apply a project. I'm going to apply the baseline to the entire project and go OK. And what this does, it creates a bit of a snapshot behind the scenes and it allows us to perform comparative analysis when we're actually running the project. So now let's just fast forward and say we're running the project. Best way to run the project is to change it from Gantt chart mode to tracking Gantt. And what you can see here is you can see it's actually added in another line. So it's broken this up into a red bar and a, um, a grey bar. The red bar actually denotes that your activities are on the critical path and the way I've done it here, everything's on the critical path. Uh, otherwise it would have been a blue bar. But the more, more interesting one in this case is the little grey bar underneath. That shows your baseline, so what you expected it was going to take. When things change in the project, you can actually see that things move. So our milestone was due here, expected to be accomplished there. It actually got delayed to this point here. Our tasks were supposed to be completed here, but it took this long. Okay, so the grey shows you the baseline and the red shows you your actuals. Okay, you can just hover over that to see what's going on. It not only provides a nice visual indication of how the project's tracking in terms of schedule, but it enables us to do a lot of cool reports. And 2010 onwards, they've actually got some really nice reports, visual reports, and also, you know, the less lovely reports. But you know, for me, it's functionality over aesthetics any day, so um, that helps me out a lot. And we'll go into the reports in in another session. But hopefully, that's given you a bit of an insight, a bit of a quick intro. Firstly, we just put out WBS. We use the indenting to, you know, show tasks versus the categories. We entered in the durations. We went through and we assigned resources to the tasks. We put in the logic with the predecessors. So if you've got any questions, just email me and I'll write a little video on how to do that. Alright, thanks for watching.